Gents, I just want to pause the episode for a moment to let you know about the Strong Men of Value Academy. You will have heard me refer to it a number of times and I want to bring more attention to it. So this isn't just a program. It's a life-changing environment and community of men who are focused on personal and professional growth. We're looking at areas of relationships, wealth and health, things to help you thrive and maximize your life. Imagine having bi-monthly one-on-one coaching sessions with myself, weekly group coaching calls, and an incredible brotherhood of high achievers by your side. Now we're diving into resilience, leadership, and holistic growth to not just succeed in your career, but to thrive in your health and your relationships. Your journey to greatness, it starts here. So join the movement and you can apply for the Strong Men of Value Academy. You can head to the manthatcanproject.com to find out more. You're listening to The Man That Can Project with Lockie Stewart, a global movement created to empower men and open up what's really going through their minds by having real and raw conversations about life's unique challenges and our individual ways of processing it all. Welcome to The Man That Can Project. Okay, welcome back to another episode of the Man Can Project podcast. Today, I am super excited to have Lucas on, co-founder of Grillo, which is organic cricket protein and, and snacks and all kinds of goodies. And I've literally got some here. Um, and to be honest, they're amazing. I just videoed my first reaction. I, I looked into the packet here of the uh, roasted crickets. Literally, as you said, they're unflavored, natural uh, things. And legit, for those who are going to watch this on YouTube, they're crickets like they're not even shaped like chips or anything so for me my brain was like oh here we go but they taste amazing but I'm super excited to have you on the program the reason why I really you know I'm grateful that we can have this chat is because one thing for me is I know the importance of nutrition uh, and clean uh, eating really natural and organic foods can have a positive impact on mental health and that's one of the biggest things that we love to talk about uh, giving people different strategies and perspectives on how they can and I've heard a lot about cricket protein through different other podcasts, and I'm excited to have a guru on here to share more about your snacks, how you got into developing these products, and you know the health benefits behind it. I know we also want to touch on some environmental benefits because I, you know, it's going to be incredible. To learn. I'm really excited to learn about that, and um, just even cricket farming. Like, how the hell do you get enough crickets to, to fill up a bag? Yeah. So, love to pass it over to you. Lucas, uh, hear a bit more about sort of your backstory, um, how you came to co-found Grillo and you know, all other aspects of your life. So thank you so much for joining us today. Sounds great. Thank you, uh, Lecky, for the opportunity to share sharing a bit of our story and um, our passion as well. Um, the way we, um, we got into crickets was, was quite funny. Like it's, it's, so we have a family business and um, it's myself, Camila, my partner, her sister, Martina and Pedro who happens to be my best friend and oh, I actually good. introduced him to Martina so they end up falling in love and we've got quite a beautiful love story in our business and uh, we always wanted to start a business together. Martina once she was um, getting ready to run her first uh, half marathon and uh, back then we, we were pretty much uh, on a vegetarian diet. We did a bit of for a while, I tried um, a vegan diet as well, yep. but I, for me, it didn't work quite well with um, training. I was training jiu-jitsu quite often and uh, surfing a lot. And back then, I was also um, a full-time chef. So for me, oh, awesome. it was very hard to get organized with, uh, with my meals. Uh, and Martina, like when she was getting ready for um, her marathon, she noticed that... Um, she was always feeling tired um, very early in the day, like 4 or 5 p.m. She would be running out of energy and she started to look for alternative protein source. Uh, she didn't want to eat uh, so much meat and uh, she didn't want to, she couldn't have the whey protein. It was not very easy for her to digest. We tried spirulina, pea protein, brown rice. Hemp protein back then was a great option and I think still a very good, uh, one of my favorite source of protein too. Uh, but then Martina came across crickets in America when she noticed a uh, few companies were uh, jumping in the market for human consumption and creating um, cricket corn chips, cricket energy bars, cricket uh, protein blends, and, and even the whole roasted crickets. 
and yeah. she started to order cricket powder from a, a range of different uh, farms all around uh, the planet, from America, Canada, uh, Europe, also a few in Asia as well. And, and she started to notice an improvement on her energy levels. And she was always a very health driven. And we were like, oh, okay, if it's, if it's that good, we might always start to eat it as well. And, and, um, and then we thought, wow, why you don't just start a business using this, this amazing protein source? We were looking for something different, unique, that was aligned obviously with health, but we also were always very mindful of um, the environmental impact that our food choice cause in our planet. And uh, yeah, then Grillo was born. We started um, from our um, office at home. That's unreal. So what, what year did you start? We started our product development in 2015. Wow. And uh, back then, we were still juggling between full-time jobs, starting the business, creating recipes, and developing uh, our strategy. So it took us about a year to get the products off the ground. So we launched at the end of 2016. Um, I must say the very first year was, was very challenging to understand the um, how we would uh, put on the market because back then in Australia, no one heard about eating crickets. There, there was a farm, uh, farming crickets already, uh, and they've been on the market for quite a while, but there was nothing yet on supermarkets, health food stores, and not, not a ready to eat product. So we tried many um, different products, uh, recipes, our uh, packaging as well, the way we presented, we kept uh, evolving along the first year. And uh, I think um, around the end of December 2017, we started to notice that we were finding our fit in uh, what the products were, were, uh, were more most appropriate for the market then. Yep. And then uh, we started to, to hit stores and get customers on board and slowly create a lot of awareness around uh, eating uh, crickets. I see. So how, how do you get them ready to eat? Like, I didn't actually even think about that until you just mentioned it. I was just like, they just look so perfectly crunchy and stuff. But is there a specific like process that you have to use? Is it like across the board with, you know, people who may be doing similar things in America? Is it all the same or do you do it a unique way or how's it sort of all? Yeah. Happen? So, so um, there's a lot of cricket farms all around the, the planet and not just cricket farms, but also there's a lot of people farming mealworms, uh, ants and lots of other insects. They say that crickets are the gateway bug. It's the easiest, uh, <laughs> like the it. easiest for people to, to accept and try. And um, the farm where we're getting our crickets from, they actually based in uh, Canada. And it's yep. the only certified organic uh, farm uh, right now in the market. For us, it was very important uh, to keep it uh, certified organic because we mostly eat organic. And um, I think like when people are eating a bug, they could associate with um, a pest. And uh, then we thought, let's keep it all organic to bring a bit more um, credibility to our products. So these guys in Canada, they started as reptile breeders. And uh, they noticed that in America, especially people were shifting towards eating insects because of their protein content, vitamins, nutrients, and they changed the whole system to make it uh, suitable and, um, and approved for human consumption. So the way they do it, they farm the crickets in a big warehouse. They're actually now using old chicken barns that are not producing chickens anymore. There's, uh, since the cage uh, chickens stopped, uh, started to slow down, a lot of the chickens started to go outside into the free range uh, concept. All those barns were um, deactivated. There was nothing happened there, and um, and Thomas Farms started to use those barns to produce crickets, where they they have a very simple process. They eat very little food. They hardly need any water, and uh, the life cycle is between six to eight weeks. Oh. So it's a very um, efficient way of producing um, protein. And um, that's, that's how the, we got into it. We found out about this farm and um, started to get the crickets from them. So we get them all roasted and ground into a very fine powder. There's yep. no chemical process to it. 
So it's basically you roast your uh, crickets, um, you roast them, grind them, and they're ready to eat. <laughs> That's incredible. That is phenomenal. And like, it just sounds too simple to be true. But so <laughs> from then, like going into that, like what are the what are the health benefits behind doing that? Because I, I'm a big believer in people taking responsibility for obviously what they put in their their bodies and. I think all too often people go looking for quick fixes and you know, whether it's, you know, if they're feeling unwell, they might look for medicine and stuff rather than trying to understand what's caused them to feel certain ways. Even, you know, you were saying before uh, Martina, when she was training for the marathon, like a natural response for people who might be feeling flat in the afternoon that I've seen might be like more caffeine or something like that in order to, um, get themselves stimulated and bring that energy back but you've sort of taken a different approach to really figure out what could work well for the body which i love because i think more people really need to be open to just trying different things and understanding how it works for the body and how it makes them feel because we're all unique and we're all different and you know there's too many quick fixes that people look for that still don't solve the the, the problem so what are some of the health like the the health benefits of the the roasted crickets so um, a lot of times when people uh, learn about insects, they, they always think of the protein content, which is, it's relatively <clears throat> high. It can be up to 65, 69% protein just on the crickets. Uh, and it's a very um, easy to digest protein too. So um, there's, um, the only allergy that would be related to eating insects would be a shellfish allergy because they say crickets are from the same family as the locusts. Apart from that, it's quite easy to digest. It's quite fulfilling. But for us, crickets are much more than just protein. I, I always like to highlight the amount of vitamin B12 on crickets. Mm -hmm. uh, there's about, um, in one tablespoon, which is 10 grams of plain cricket powder, you can get 155% of your recommended daily intake on B12. So it's a very good wow. option for people who don't want to eat uh, meat every day, uh, who want to reduce their meat intake, but still want to get their B12 from a natural source, opposed to doing a B12 shot or using a spray or, um, or just uh, other uh, B12 supplements that are on the markets. And uh, B12, I think it's a very important vitamin for all of us. It does help a lot with brain function. It um, helps um, sending your um, happy messages into the brain and stimulate creation of serotonin. Also, there's a lot of talk uh, on B12, especially now that everyone's worried about their immunity system yeah. on uh, how important the vitamins, including B12, are for building the immunity system. And then you still can find iron, fiber, calcium, and all other vitamins in crickets. So it's a quite a nutrient-dense superfood. You don't need a, a whole lot of it. You only need a tablespoon a day, um, and it, it will give you a lot of the nutrients that you need for the day. That's perfect for especially someone like myself who just I just mix a whole heap of stuff together and drink it to get the the nutrients. So I love that, and I love also you know from the different products like having stuff that is it probably for me. Like when I looked at those first, I was like, man, that's 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 scary for me to just start putting crickets in my mouth. But the fact that I, I started with one of the, the bars, yeah, I was like, yeah, that's all right. Like it tastes good and it doesn't, it's not fearful. And now I was like, I'm ready to attack this. This is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and feel good about it. But so like, obviously, you know, the, the health benefits are phenomenal and it's definitely a good option for those who don't want to eat as much meat. And I think, you know, we're coming into a time where more and more people are looking for alternatives and um, you know, there's all those beyond beef burgers and stuff because people are wanting to sort of, you know, for whatever reason, there's, there's a magnitude of reasons. Um, but I'm also all, <clears throat> always looking for ways to, to be kinder to my gut. Like that's one of the biggest things for me because I, I don't like having upset stomach and I don't like feeling heavy or bloated or, or anything like that. Um, so finding alternate ways and I do find, if I eat, like I still eat red meat, but I try not to eat a heap of it just purely for the way it makes me feel. And I think, you know, something to be mindful of for people is how certain foods make you feel. So always looking to try alternative um, things. But, you know, as opposed to traditional sort of ways of getting protein, like what's the environmental 
um, benefits of also looking at this as well, because there's a lot of people who are, you know, now, especially we're going through COVID-19 right now, we're seeing how the world's healing itself, which is incredible because we're all locked inside transports not happening and all the damaging things in the world's healing itself. So on that note, like what are some of the, the environmental benefits that, you know, you can see from choosing this source of protein? Yeah, so I think like the 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 number one um, uh, environmental aspect is uh, the amount of water that, that farms need to produce crickets versus how much water it's required to produce uh, the same one kilo of beef. They say that um, to produce crickets, um, you need a one kilo of crickets, you require about a liter of water. And to produce the same amount of beef protein from from breeding, uh, I mean, from growing the food for that cow, the soy or whatever grains they are, and then uh, growing the cow through the one, two, three, four year life cycle that they will require, all the way to slaughtering, you will be needing about 20,000 liters of water, which would be a, a huge number uh, in comparison to the very little water you need for crickets. And I always like to Wow. To, to say like what I've seen at the cricket farm and was quite interesting is the, their watering system. Uh, there was a little uh, pipe where there were little drops of water coming out. And I said uh, they were like all draining into, um, into a drain, like not a drain, but like a, a half pipe kind of thing. And I was like, what's this? And the guy said, that's the water they drink. And I'm like, but that's just drops every now and then. And, and the farmer said that if you would have, um, a, a container with water there crickets could drown on it so they 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 hardly need any water um which was fascinating to see you know like in water especially in australia it's it's such a important commodity and we've seen like through the bushfires when sydney was getting close to to pretty much run out of water and imposing more restrict uh water uh, restrictions so I think water, it's definitely the, the number one benefit that we would get from uh, farming crickets, but then also the amount of feed required, uh, the space as well as uh, we're slowly running out of uh, land. Crickets could be also farmed vertically and there's even some farms that are setting themselves, setting up their farms in the middle of uh, cities just so they can show that it's a... Um, it's a concept that would work if you want right in the middle of um, of uh, Europe, you know. So it can be, we can save a lot of water, feed, land, and um, I think the life cycle, the, the efficiency, it's huge as well. It can be 12 times more efficient than a cow when you, when you look at one to, um, when you look at six to eight weeks to produce your uh, protein, that's yeah. a quite fast, a turnover as well that's a massively quick turnaround and especially you know without having to take up as much space as well i think it's cool and it'd be really interesting to see even i'm, I'm based in brisbane to see in the middle of the city if they were just farming crickets in there and is there <laughs> is, is there any regular i'm sure there would be especially in australia like regulations around cricket farming and um i guess maybe licensing or how how that whole sort of process goes yeah, hundred uh, percent. Especially um, if um, farming for human consumption, and and I actually participated um, last year at the end of last year on the first uh, edible insect um, symposium, which was for the whole industry. It was based in Sydney, actually, out of uh, Dutton Park at the Eco Science yep. uh, Prison, and uh, they had uh, companies like ourselves. They had. Uh, the CSIRO funding the event and all the scientists, entomologists, a lot of farmers uh, from around Australia that are farming not just crickets, but also black soldier fly, which is a big uh, and very good option for, um, for um, livestock farmers. So they starting to use um, black soldier flies to feed also livestock which would be a much more sustainable way than to, to feed the livestock than a uh, soy, for example. Wow. So there's actually like bodies regulating and um, the CSIRO and also the Insect uh, Protein Association of Australia, which is uh, working with um, 
the Department of Agriculture and regulating the whole industry because it's still all very new, but we've seen that there has been a massive increase, not just on, on demand, but also interest from people to create their farms, to create their businesses around uh, insects and, um, and just uh, bringing uh, the food into the market, not just for, for pet food, but also for uh, human consumption. 100%. And obviously, you know, you're probably leading the charge in Australia with, you know, once again, educating people on the environmental health and, you know, understanding of how cricket farming sort of works and, and the benefits of, you know, crickets in general and uh, the protein. What are some of the biggest misconceptions that people have at the moment about eating crickets? I think, um, like, um, I'll, I'll, it's still quite new for a lot of people when... Um, yeah. A lot of people, they sometimes they don't understand about the environmental and uh, um, health benefits, and it, it's quite easy to to not be willing to try something new. Um, our biggest challenge, I would say, it's definitely the ick factor. People feel um, disgusted to eat an insect, you know, because it, it's not part of our culture. Uh, historically, we stop eating insects when... Um, about 10,000 years ago, we started to domesticate cows and chickens and uh, insects started to be treated as a pest because they were eating all the food that was going to end up feeding the cows and chickens and, and so on in the supply chain. I think the, the biggest misconception is that uh, people don't want to try the crickets because they feel a bit disgusted about it, but there's no difference in my my opinion from uh, eating a, a cricket to eating a cow or a piece of chicken, they all um, protein source, they all um, been alive at one stage and uh, they all have their uh, particular nutrients that are very important for our health. Yeah, right. That's awesome. And you guys run workshops and stuff as well, right? Or is, is that, I read on your workshop. So what's, is the intention behind obviously the workshop uh, to continue educating people and stuff or what sort of made you you delve into that that workshop space as well yeah so the with the workshops we we last year we did about 15 workshops around the high schools uh in especially in queensland brisbane gold coast um, and a couple in the sunshine coast where we were um, running workshops for kids who are studying uh, home and economics or food and nutrition on their curriculum Yep. And a lot of teachers started, uh, actually one teacher, the first one contacted us and wanted us to come in and, and do a talk about bugs. And uh, from that was just a chain reaction. Like they saw it on Facebook and we started to get calls and that actually became a, a very important part of our business. We, we started to notice that to reach our vision, which is a planet and it's people, uh, we could follow a lot of avenues to reach that vision, not just selling products, but also educating people on how to use crickets, why use them and, and the benefits as well on, um, on our health and environment. So the school bug talks became a, a big thing for us. We obviously been a, a slightly, well, a hundred percent affected right now because we yeah. can't do live workshops, but we are starting to develop um, an online program where we can uh, still run the same workshop and, and help, help families as well. Because I see like from my friends that have kids, the biggest challenge for them right now is how to get the kids entertained at home through isolation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I think it could be a very interesting way of getting their families together and, and talking to their kids and moms and dads about, about some a different food and how we could uh, introduce that in our diets. So the workshops are are something I'm quite passionate about it. I really enjoy talking about crickets and, and talking to the kids and educating. We run um, a few recipes. We teach them how to cook a few very simple recipes that are also health-driven. So we try to show, let's say, one of the recipes is a chalk chip cookie. We want to show kids not just how to do a chalk chip cookie, but how can you substitute ingredients like uh, your common white plain flour for a different flour or maybe use oats or bananas or something else so they see that there are options out there to to boost our health through food and instead of um, having to take um, 
medicines uh, after. I love that. I think that's so important, especially, you know, I'm not the best cook. I'll, I'll admit to that, but I, I think it's the power of what we can get from our food for natural healing and, and to make us feel good as I sort of touched on before is so important. And a lot of us lack education. I, we've become so busy that the, the quick fixes or your fast foods are the, you know, generally the easiest thing where we don't put much thought into what we're putting into our bodies. And a lot of us wonder why we feel terrible or why we feel anxious or depressed or all these sorts of things or aching. And you just got to come back to like the fundamental stuff, like learning and understanding what you're putting in your body is so important. I think that's phenomenal that you're doing that to educate school children. And, you know, I'm sure we'll all be able to watch the workshops when they're online as well to do that. Cause I think it's, it's so important. And I'm, I need to continue learning. And I know there's a lot of people out there who also need to continue learning because if we want to improve ourselves, and, you know, I don't have kids yet, but for those who listen and do have kids or are in the process of, you know, thinking about kids, it's so important to bring your children up, right? So they don't have any metabolic health diseases that go along with poor, poor diet and nutrition. I think it's, yeah, I agree. And I, I've got the, the recipe page up there. There's some phenomenal recipes going on here do you like when you're sort of teaching and, and talking about all this sort of stuff is it these like the the protein sachets and uh greens and all that sort of stuff is that what you also substitute and, and put some of that those sorts of things in there or is there other products like how, how many ways can you actually use crickets like yeah so like um it's it's much easier than we we think you know like to use crickets um especially the plain cricket powder, which is the one, uh, the yellow packet, the one that doesn't have any flavor added to it. Yep. That's the one we usually bring in to schools um, together with the energy bars as well so that kids can uh, try the bars that, that are ready to eat. Yep. So we use that plain cricket powder into a series of recipes. You can add them to pancakes, um, your uh, bolognese sauce, if you like. You can mm. bake any breads, um, cakes, muffins it's a very versatile ingredient you can do energy balls uh, your uh, bliss balls you can even do a few sauces with them and um, I, we, we find that um, a lot of moms um, who struggle to get their kids to eat vegetables or other nutrients they find quite easy to add the cricket powder into a muffin or a cookie or something like that which their kids will be eating without questions so it's easy to dilute into any recipe. It's, um, it has a very um, mild taste, I would say, when adding to a pancake. If you're adding the right amount, a tablespoon, you don't need more than that. So it's not a substitute to flour. It's, it's just an addition. And we always say if you're baking a cake and you use a, one cup of flour, all you need to add is a, a tablespoon of crickets to get that extra nutrition in that. So it's quite a, quite a simple ingredient to use. And especially now that we, I usually always cook from home. Uh, I only go out to eat if um, it's somewhere where I'm going to get a different experience. I've been on the hospitality industry for 14 <coughs> years. And, and I know like how a lot of the, the, the restaurants and um, cafes out there are operating. It's, it's mostly for profit. Obviously, there are a lot of them that are, cooking for health as well and they care about uh, their customers feeling well after a meal and eating healthy but a lot of it it's it's in they got to make a profit otherwise they go out of business and I see the difference from cooking at home where I can shop all my ingredients uh, I know exactly what it's going to the food and I even see like some of my friends who who always uh, ate uh, on the streets or ate in restaurants and cafes. Now they, they don't have that option anymore. And they all cooking at home. They're learning, like guys and girls, they all learning to cook at home. And they starting to realize that they feel better from eating at home because they know what they're eating. And they also getting a lot more time with their families because they cooking with their families. So I think there's a... a even though the situation right now in the world in Australia, it's pretty bad. There's a lot of positive things that will come out of that. And I think um, eating better and uh, more quality time with your family, it's definitely uh, one of those things. Yeah. One of my good mates runs a uh, non-for-profit, the Human Connection Project, and he's massive on, on those two things you just said, like 
learning to cook, but also the human connection that we get to experience when we're going through that process. And I think, you know, going back to, you know, putting obviously trying different, different um, ways to get your protein and all that sort of stuff and getting creative with your cooking can be a therapeutic way to one understand the processes because sometimes it can be frustrating and you can cook a bad meal, but you don't give up. You try it again. It, it sort of, relates to business you know we all have have uh stumbling blocks in business where you sometimes just go why am i doing this but then you come back the next day with a different different perspective and even for life like a lot of us um you know we all face challenges and struggles but it's it's not about giving up it's about coming back to it with a fresh set of eyes and that's why you know whether it's cooking that can help you get creative or um you know just that human connection having those conversations that may allow you to view things in a different perspective is so, so important. And, you know, for me, I'm always open-minded. I wasn't always that way, but definitely open-minded now, even, you know, two years ago, I would never have tried crickets. I just, yeah, just wouldn't have been on the radar. But now I know that I've learned so many things that because I've been open-minded, they've had a you know huge improvement in my life and just made me feel better for whatever reason. So that's why, you know, I'm excited for people to learn more about, you know, I guess additional ways of getting their protein sources rather than having to, you know, always supplement them or, you know, whatever it is, but just trying to get them more naturally uh, and from a way that has so many other benefits as well, which is pretty freaking exciting. And it, you know, brings together that holistic approach where you are actually spending time, you're not doing that fast food approach and you're getting that connection and, and learning new skills or learning to cook and stuff, which excites the hell out of me. Yeah. That's for sure. I feel what? like uh, what you said about being open-minded, it's, it's, we can only benefit from it. Like if you think like there's so many very unusual foods now in the market, like uh, kombucha, uh, the medicinal mushrooms and uh, insects as well, like all, all those things. Like if you look back like five years ago, people would be like, what? Medicinal mushrooms? They'll think they would get high from it. Yep. And um, kombucha, like it's, it's made out of like a, a bacteria. So like people are like, who is going to drink that? And now it's it, Coca-Cola bought Mojo Kombucha because they, they think it's a great product. So there's a lot of different things, I think, coming into the market that, that, will, um, that are very, very unusual ones. And now they, people trying them, giving a go and starting to benefit from, um, from accepting that. So it, it, we always like to say like uh, when people are concerned about eating crickets or an uh, insect in, in general, like we always pointed out to sushi, like sushi 40 years ago was something out of this world. Like my mom still doesn't eat sushi or raw fish. And uh, even in America, like sushi only got popular uh, in the eighties when uh, there was a very famous chef who invented the California rope and did mm the sushi inside out with the, the seaweed was the problem. So they got the seaweed inside and sushi take off in America. And like, if you look at it in Australia, you, every, um, like every shopping center you go, they'll have a Thai place, they'll have a pizza place, we'll probably have a fast food place and a sushi roll place. Yeah. So it's, so there are a lot of things which were once unusual, but now are starting to come up in our market and in uh, probably five, 10, 10 years will be like, just normal and we not even remember that once we haven't ate those things 100 percent, 100 percent. it's it's definitely important i think for everyone to i i'm a big believer you you, you need to be open-minded because the way the way that we have been thinking have got us so far so we need to experience new things and try new things to understand more about ourselves as individuals but also what cool stuff is out there as well yeah that's so true but what's for yourself even in sort of shifting to a, a uh, business and sort of passion focus, like what's been the biggest challenge that you've experienced since stepping in and setting up Grillo? I think like the, the number one challenge, like I mentioned before, was uh, definitely the, the awareness, the ick factor. Obviously, people didn't want to try it. But um, the fact that there was no awareness in Australia around eating crickets and we, we've been building that and also learning how to build that because like to get a new product in the market or a new brand in the market, it's very challenging. But to create something using an ingredient which was never used before, it's, 
it's it's almost like um, yeah, it's almost uh, impossible at the beginning when you look at it. But if I I'm a strong believer that if you have the right mindset, um, and I love the the mission that you guys have, the I mean that can uh, mindset. I, I was when I was reading uh, earlier this week, I was like, wow, that's so true. You know, like uh, you gotta have that. I can do this mindset, and um, I think like when we started, we started from a part of a point of resi resilience where we thought, okay, this is a great idea. We're gonna make this happen. And uh, even though there's a lot of challenges and rocks through the path, always we always talk as a team and and try to remember that we can't give up because temporary because of temporary failure. You know, like if there's something that it's hard right now. What can we do to fix that and uh, keep overcoming those challenges? I think having that positive mindset uh, and overcoming um, the challenges uh, that we get uh, in terms of uh, getting the product out there, um, it's very important. So I think that the biggest challenge is creating awareness and um, spreading the word, you know, like it's um, marketing, it's quite expensive. We are a startup business. Uh, a lot of the marketing strategies we use, it's no cost or low cost. Uh, we don't have money to go and uh, stand on a big outdoor by, um, by the M1 or yeah, yeah, to yeah. go into a famous magazine or go on TV. And those are the things that get the word out there quickly. So we, we don't have that option. So we've got to slowly keep growing the business, build relationships, partnerships, collaborate with people. And uh, we know that the result will come. We just got to keep, uh, keep moving forward. It's awesome. I love that. That's really cool. I think it's uh, a lot of people. I'm just really impressed. Like one, the resilience of obviously doing something from complete scratch where, you know, you are having to raise the awareness and, and change people's view of eating crickets. Like to me, that is the resilience that would go into that and probably the amount of days where you've been like, is this really worth it? But you kept going it is phenomenal. And I love that trait. Uh, but it's also so inspiring that, you know, you've gone all in on something, you know, you, when you started, you said you were still working the job. So you're obviously working a million hours a week to, you know, get the job done, but then also work on the business. But now you've created that that lifestyle for yourself where you really get to go all in on something that you truly believe in. And I think it's so incredible. And there's a lot of people out there who don't take, take those risks. And, and it's, it's, there's so much potential and I believe you guys are doing phenomenal things and it's, it's awesome to see. And I, I don't, you know, it wouldn't be, you guys wouldn't be here had you not taken that risk back in 20, 2015, 2016 yeah no that's true and like uh you know and uh and i must say like the side job is something that is still happening until today you know because we we obviously gotta keep growing the business gotta pay our bills and we gotta keep the income coming from every side because all the money that comes into the business we gotta reinvest as well in the business otherwise we can't grow we never had an investor on board um no grants everything we did was organically like from creating a product, getting into the market, selling and slowly growing and getting up there. And, and like, even now, like we were, I came back from America a couple of weeks ago and had to go on a 14 day isolation and, <laughs> yeah. and it really plays in your head. You know, it's not staying at home. It's knowing that you can't go out and you yeah. like start to ask questions to yourself. And then a few days later, lost all my side jobs. And I'm like, everyone's like oh dear what are we gonna do now you know and i think we we had like one of those like like every now and then we think is this really worth like you said you know and then we're like great we we can uh, we have two options we can use this situation to get better or better i saw jimmy quick saying that the other day mm -hmm. on a webinar and i was like he's got it you know like we can be better from this we can uh, use this time I don't have a side job now, but I can use all my time to focus on the business. Uh, I'm on a very fortunate uh, situation where I can do that right now. So why not be positive, do my best and get to the other side ready to keep growing instead of being miserable about it or being sad or confused. It, I know it can get confusing, but I think there's so many tools out there and tools out there and uh, ways of um, 
getting on a, on a positive mindset that if you get the support from the right people and like we have a fantastic team like i said it's a it's a family team um, awesome. we, we love each other we always care about each other and the most important thing for us and we always had that in the table is is our family and our relationship if we ever get to the point where the business is getting uh, in front of that we just we can just stop it and keep our relationships businesses and ways of making money they will always be there there will always be something new but I think that connection it's the biggest asset and and more and more like especially with this COVID-19 I think that um, it's more and more clear what's really important all we have is our health and each other like money doesn't matter like if you think it really helps you can have have a really good life uh, if you have more money but if you don't have your health and and someone to be with through this COVID-19 crisis doesn't matter how many millions you got in the bank it's not going to help anything 100 percent, i could not agree more definitely agree i love that one so one last question i want to ask now and never prepare people for this question so don't get all nervous but uh yeah <laughs> <laughs> because and this is probably more more um to, to the men who, who listen as well, like the, the question will be, what is your definition of a man? And the reason why I love asking everyone this is because we all have different beliefs and experiences of life. And, you know, obviously there's a stereotypical man, macho dude, which clearly doesn't work because, you know, where a lot of people are at the unhealthiest and unhappiest they've ever been. Um, so I'd love to hear what, I guess, your definition of a man is and what you're sort of striving to, to be as a man. Very good question. I like it. <laughs> I think like, um, you know, like a definition of a man to me, it's to be, and especially lately, you know, uh, lately I've been thinking a lot, you know, like, and I just want to be the nicest possible person to everyone else. Like sometimes it's very easy to fall into a trap where you get grumpy or, uh, dismotivated and um, you can get confused mentally you know like I as a background I I have um, a condition that is a pyro disorder where sometimes uh, if I get into because I lack the vitamin B complex uh, and zinc and other vitamins I can get stressed very quick and uh, sometimes that reflects a lot into the closest people the people I love the most and I always strive to to be the best version of myself and sometimes i have conversations with my my partner where i tell her that uh, i just want to keep uh growing but i want to also become uh, a nice person to everyone and help people and i think never i felt in a way that i want to help more and more people then now you know like i think uh if you if when i see people help each other out with the very small things i think it's very motivational and i think uh the real man like um it's not that tough dude that can drink hard and tell people what to do and i think um the ego it's something that it shouldn't be part of a real man um i'm very passionate about martial arts i've been training brazilian jiu-jitsu for six years now and uh it's something that really helped me keeping my ego under control yep. and uh, uh, being humble, you know, like knowing that doesn't matter how good I am, I can always lose and uh, there's always someone out there than, that can do better than me. So I think uh, just having that feeling that I'm doing my best to myself and to the others, I think that's what a real man is, like the one that it's caring about each other and express themselves and, and it's challenging sometimes to express yourself but and tell what you're feeling but I think that if you can tell people what you feel uh, how you feel you have a much bigger chance to to become a better person so people can tell you from another point of view what you need to improve uh, in a way that you that you can improve it's awesome such a good response I love it thank you so where, before we, before we jump off, like where can people find you? People I know are going to be curious about getting their hands on some, whether you try the roasted crickets and you've got so many different products, which is awesome. But if you want to, so yeah, where can people sort of find you guys uh, online? Uh, probably at the moment, because we can't 
can't go meet people unfortunately but where can people find you guys yeah so uh definitely online we have an online store uh, in our website which is a uh, grilloprotein.com.au um but also we stock our products in over 70 70 stores now between um wow between byron bay and uh northern and far north queensland so you'll be able to find us in uh selected igas all through brisbane and sunshine coast uh also a few of the health shops which are in shopping centers um all around brisbane there's also market organics in rockley clayfield uh cleveland uh not cleveland sorry uh chapel hill uh ipswich new market there's there's a list of stockists in our website as well and uh even though we always like to to sell through through our website uh if for everyone out there that gets interested about our products um and if you still can go out to shop i would uh, i would really suggest that you buy from one of our stockists so we can support all these small businesses out there that are struggling now to keep their doors open i think uh, it's very important uh, that we keep supporting each other and um yeah if you if you want to jump if anyone want to jump in the our website and check the stocks is in there and and go and uh, support those small businesses and um, supermarkets and other stores that need our support now to keep the economy uh strong you know. that will be uh the way to go awesome and we'll we definitely do, we do we do have a, a good sale in our website too so if you want to receive everything at home that's an option too yeah, I love I love home deliveries. It's my jam. <laughs> yeah, it's the new finger. Hundred <laughs> percent. But and we'll definitely keep keep posted for when the the workshops go online as well. Yeah, so nice for be, sure. Yeah, yeah, that'll be beneficial for a lot of people, especially those with kids at home, like you said, that are trying to keep them occupied and teach them some educational and valuable stuff. For sure. Thank and you, let Sam. Me know, let me know once you try the the powders there, Lucky, and um, we'll send you um, a bigger pack when you tell me which one was your favorite. We'll get you a, a bit of a supply, and and then you can try every day and and see if you experience the the benefit as well from from eating crickets. Awesome! I look forward to. It. I'm looking forward to. It. Thank you for listening to the Man That Can Project podcast. My name is Lockie Stewart, and I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it helpful. If you did. Please take a moment to rate and review the Man That Can Project on your favorite podcast platform. And don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with our newest episodes. We'll see you again next time.